Welcome back to Cinema Society on the Roundtable. I'm your host, Oshrick Fox. I'm Retro Nemo. Hi, my name's Tom. And we just saw Spider-Man Homecoming and... Oh my whoa. gosh. I have, that was... I have a lot of feelings about this movie. A lot of my good feelings. Great in it. I have a lot of good feelings, some bad feelings, but... Yeah, in this there mo- was some bad stuff. Not and this is, but I think overall it was a really great movie, but... We're going to have a non-spoiler section, then we'll say, hey, this is where spoilers begin, and then at that point, if you have not seen this movie yet, or if you want to steer clear of spoilers, click right off. So Okay, first of all, first of all, I think we can agree right off the bat, the best Spider-Man movie that oh, they've yeah. made. No, for no, sure. I think Sp- Spider-Man 2 is nope, better for you're wrong. Uh-uh. a fact. No, I'm objectively reasons. wrong. You're outvoted, so you're objectively wrong. In my opinion, the best Spider-Man movie and one of the best Marvel movies they've ever made. I, I mean, like compared mm, to the other ones, that, I, that one I'm not so sure. I about. think it's up there with Marvel movies, and it's definitely up there with Spider-Man movies. But the, there's some key factors that stop it from being the greatest Spider-Man film. So, Kevin, what are those factors? If you want to dive into them, uh, we should get that to in a moment because that's that's okay. more of a con. But right now, let's focus on the pros and the pros. Okay. All the actors in this movie were amazing. Like spot there, on. There was especially not, my girlfriend. There was not one bad actor in this entire film. Everyone brought their A game. Whether it was Tom Holland, Marissa Tomei, Zendaya, Robert Downey Jr., and Donald Hannibal Burris. And to clear this any, movie. and to clear anybody's doubts, no, this is not Iron Man: Homecoming. Robert Downey Jr. is honestly brilliant in the movie, and that shot they have in every single commercial and trailer of him and Spider-Man swinging side by side—that was yeah. even a poster. It's not in the movie. That that no. shot is not in the movie. It's an advertiser thing for sure. Yeah, they. I get, and I get it. Robert Downey Jr. is very profitable, so they had to market this as you know, uh, a Iron Man, Spider-Man team-up film to make the money. Because I don't know if you're not confident in Spider-Man, even though I'm positive Spider-Man himself can still sell yeah. some tickets. But his role in the movie... They had to push the whole crossover thing, because it's a Marvel movie, I feel. Yeah, they really wanted to establish films in the MCU, and, oh, I I think they kind of went overboard at some parts, like, did I really have to hear? And I I believe, was was it Black Nerd Comedy? He made this exact same critique. Um, Was that so hard, Vale? Um, That... (laughs) (laughs) Oh, snap. Like, five minutes in, already throwing shots. Um, F, it was like... uh, the Avengers, like these, uh, the group of choosers were talking. It was like F Mary Kill. Um, it was like uh, Thor, yeah, that, it was like F Thor Mary uh, something like that. It, that. At that point, it was kind of over the top. That, that was kind of cringy I, dialogue. And before like even we, like before we go on to that, can I just say that this is like, like I really like how we're actually seeing Iron Man in like a different kind of role, like from a different perspective. Yes, I I really appreciated his character in this film. I, oh my All God. the superheroes, I feel like they've graduated from like their past their origin stories, and they're more of mentors now than they've like ever been. And I think that's a super interesting take, like to show how the story progresses. Well, we've only really seen Iron Man in that role, so I can't really we can't really speak for anybody else. Oh, what about I mean, all the what about all the Captain like America? Men- I wouldn't even see like clips. a mentor, like a mentor role, just more of like an authority figure. Like I mean, when you see, like whenever you saw Tony Stark on screen, it was like, oh shit. Like, someone's in trouble. <laughs> he was true. definitely a father figure, and he even has that one scene that we'll get into in spoilers, where, like, he, he, he was definitely trying to be, like, a father figure. Yeah. And I really appreciated that. I thought that was great. He felt more like an uncle to me. Yeah. Like I said, there's one, there's, I'll mention in spoilers that it was like, yeah, oh, like, section. um, but the actors, like I said, all of them, Donald Glover, and like I feel like every character played their part well. I feel like can I yeah. can I just like can I just throw praise at Hamble Burris because I feel like people aren't mentioning him enough. I mean, I feel like he was the only character that didn't really have like anything beyond comic relief. Yo, there was like, a lot of comic relief in the film. He was though. Hamble Burris though. He really was just Hannibal, and it totally worked. I feel. Oh no! It definitely like, worked. Like he was just. He was like running detention, I believe. Was he was he the gym teacher? He was yes. the gym teacher and he ran detention. Yeah, like he he was just a fun little character to have. And I think yeah. his presence in the movie, like, yeah, he could take it out, nothing like really changes, but it, it works so well. And I don't I don't really consider it a spoiler, but like when uh the Captain America so Captain America, a lot of people were there were speculations and talks that he was in this film. And yeah. he is, but only as pre recorded uh, like cheesy school PSAs, 
like when Peter gets attention, they have like a clip for that. Um, yeah. During gym class, there's a clip for that. Not really a spoiler. It's a fun little thing. It it doesn't really ruin your immersion of the movie. And it, it it was really cool. I think they oh, really worked them in very well. It felt like an inside joke, like with every fan of Marvel, almost sort of just to kind of like like meta well, well, that, 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 That's that's spoiler territory. I feel like for what you're referring to specifically. Oh no, I was just referring to the thing as a whole. Just having Captain America show up like on VHS tapes, but like that goes back to the thing with um how. Like the the F Mary kill with the Avengers and like how the is that a spoiler if I say the the bank robbers had the masks on I think no that, that was, was in the trailer, trailer. that was in the trailer. was in the trailer stuff like that it's like is the world just obsessed with the Avengers like is it like that bad that it's all they talk about it kind of <laughs> like for a second I was like come on like there's got to be politics who's the president right now like somebody yeah. take a step back that was the one know. thing where like I feel like they did a really good job of like grounding everything and like making yeah. it feel like reality where it's like they had the crappy school news show which was like really realistic. That was like that threw me off. And, the and crappy news show. And it was so accurate too. That's the thing. The green screen king. They did a really good job. This felt like this truly really felt like a Spider Man. Not even movie, but a Spider-Man story in the modern times, like truly yeah. the modern times. Like yeah. this, this was all these characters. Like everyone was complaining about like all these changes, and like I believe like I don't think they explicitly said it, but he goes to like a private school now. I know that was said in interviews for sure. Yeah, um, that was cool. But then everyone there is smart. Yeah, it all made sense, and mm -hmm. and I even don't know in if a this is like spoiler territory, but I like how they made him earn our respect. What do you mean? Like. At the beginning of the movie, he's just, like, this obnoxious, nerdy kid who doesn't know what he's doing, and he's, like, not even a good superhero. And then, like, over time, he develops as a superhero, and then you start to respect him more because he went through that development, which I don't think they've ever done in a Spider-Man movie. No, oh. and also, I, well, not, I, I totally agree with you. Not in the same way. Wait, there was no, there was no not, uncle... Definitely not in the same way, but I... Like I said, I feel like Spider-Man 2 had a more compelling character arc for Peter, but that's just because it carried over the first one. But what Raimi did for his series was something that I don't think can be replicated in these films. And they're, they're not trying to replicate it. That's what no. I really appreciate this. You can tell they weren't yeah. trying to go for, oh, we got to top They really Raimi. went for their own thing. Yeah, they, we weren't trying to top Raimi. We're not trying to top Webb. We're just trying to do our own thing here. And if, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Spectacular Spider-Man the animated series. This movie felt like an arc from Spectacular Spider-Man and brought to life on the big screen and i really <laughs> loved it every single second i was immersed this felt like spider-man like even though yeah they kept trying to force down our throats yeah this is in the mcu they did mm -hmm. their own like this felt like a spider-man film this does not feel like uh, an avengers film like because you know like civil war yeah that was kind of captain america film but like every other scene you had iron man or you had like all these mm -hmm. avengers this was just a spider-man film like this wasn't a team-up film this wasn't a, a spider-man iron man film or a spider-man captain america film or a spider-man the avengers film it was a spider-man film set in the same universe as the avengers and i think that's what a lot of spider-man fans wanted now people who Definitely. came to see like people who are fans of only the avengers and they thought like the, like they thought they were gonna get to a movie they're gonna be disappointed but I, I think that's the point. Not disappointed, just like kind of feel like it a little short in that terms. Because you did get to see Tony Stark and you did get to see Captain America a little bit. Like just enough to like kind of subside people over. But I think the main focus was Spider Man. And I think that was made like pretty clear. I don't know. Yeah, they're going to be well, disappointed really in good. content for the Avengers, but they're going to be. It, it, it makes up, like the film makes up for it if you're expecting this mm. grand like Spider Man Iron Man team of film. Like they're. I was surprised. It's not was, Avengers 3. It's not Avengers 3. Yeah. Like, Spider-Man well, does everything really on his great. own. Yeah. Which what is I cool. think is really great is how it doesn't feel like another remake of Spider-Man. Yeah, um, the and amazing... The biggest thing, there was no Uncle Death, uh, Uncle Ben death scene. We didn't get to see him, like, we didn't see him get bit by, like, any spider. Like, it just jumped right into it from, like, where we first saw him. That was the coolest part. Yeah, and... I feel like The Amazing Spider-Man, the first one by Mark Webb, it felt like it was just trying to remake the Raimi films, but with a different yeah. villain. Kind of. Not with the they character just wanted arts, to like, like jumpstart it. Like how they did the origin story. Like, yeah, they switched up a little. And I enjoyed the first Amazing Spider-Man. I'm not saying it was the greatest movie ever or the greatest Spider-Man movie the ever. The first Amazing Spider-Man. I really like the first Amazing Spider-Man. I think looking back yeah. on it, like if we were to watch it now, it'd probably be serviceable. But for its time, it was it was enjoyable, especially after because it came after Spider-Man Three. So yeah, it I was super excited for the second one. 
and then it came out, and then I wasn't excited for anything after that. Now, the con I have with the movie, the reason why I say this isn't as good as Spider-Man 2, or, like, why I didn't, I couldn't enjoy as much as the Raimi films, and I'll go a little bit more into, I'll elaborate in spoilers, but I feel like there wasn't, there was action sequences, but it wasn't actually any combat or action. Like, there, none of the blows actually can... None of the blows actually connected. If you watch the, I mean, I know they said like a year ago, like yeah, Spider-Man never actually hit someone in the film. Like, there's actually no big final battle or like like the set pieces. They're all confrontations. They're confrontations for sure, but there's no action sequences. And because of that, I feel like there's almost a lack of tension. And I feel, I feel like, like that's always been a problem with Spider-Man movies, though. No, if you look at Raimi, like the first, I don't know when the last time you, any of you guys watched like the first Spider-Man, but like those action scenes actually get pretty rough. Like the the final scene between, or the final battle between Spider Man and Green Goblin in the original Raimi oh, film. Oh, God. It, it's yeah. rough. It's great. They're all bloodied up. There's punches when being he's thrown. Like, it's, when it's, it's just like completely through him and like he's like impaled and Peter Perk is just there. Like that's intense. That's something you don't see in this one. Not, not even Norman getting impaled, but like just like but all their fights throughout uh, the first f- Spider Man. Like their punches, mm-hmm. like I said, the punches kind of like it's an actual brawl. We don't get that here. And I think, and so. I feel like. In some aspects, okay. it makes sense because yeah, he's fifteen. He has real yeah. punches, but again, action and, and Spider Man has always been important too. Like again, mm-hmm. I said I was I felt like I was watching an episode of Spectacular Spider Man. Like uh, Spectacular Spider Man like had not there yet though, I mean, not to I, the point of like extreme violence. You mean like here's the thing: like coming from a wrestling perspective, if you have like say a big guy in there with a high flyer, uh-huh. like the high flyer isn't gonna just run up and punch him because that's not believable. He's gonna do like some flippy stuff and like turn him over and cradle him and try and get the pin that way. But the difference like, that's how he's gonna win, and that's what we kinda see with Spider Man is he's not like the dudes have weapons that can knock him through buses. Like he's not gonna try and like run up and punch them like that. He's gonna try yeah. and outsmart them and try and use his speed and agility to his advantage. And that's always been Spider Man like at the root of his character, I feel like. But yeah. like I said, it felt like I was watching an arc of Spectacular Spider-Man, but even in Spectacular Spider-Man, like, they had they had their punches blown. Like, even when Spider-Man's taking on the bad guys in that series, and that series is viewed by a lot of people like the most faithful Spider-Man adaption there is to this day. And in that series, he was still throwing blows. He was still having kicks and punches. And yeah, he had kicks in here, but like I said, the action the, the action department was kind of lacking. Now in terms of, like, act, like, action sequences, like, he's definitely moving around. This is, like... I feel like the it's most action packed. This is the most oh. agile Spider Man's ever been. Like he's definitely moves around a lot. Like he's definitely the best animated he's ever been. He mm-hmm. he he moves like Spider Man. He talks like Spider Man. Like I said, like this is a great Spider Man. But mm-hmm. it I just feel like especially for Spider Man films, the action was just lacking. I feel yeah. like it wasn't oh, well. trying to go for action though. And yeah, and that's it's not a, that's not necessarily a bad thing. This was a coming of no. age story. They've always ever yeah. since day one is a coming of age story. But at the same time, like, it, like, 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 like at the very like the only punches really thrown was when the vulture was trying to poach him at the very end of the film, which is kind of spoiler territory, so I won't get into it there. But even then, it didn't really the hits didn't. If you look, they clearly did not connect. Yeah, but he, you do get to see a lot of fun action with like web spinning and like. Yeah. And I wish a lot of more the action this. though was kind of meant to be more realistic than like an action film. Yeah, like, I agree. In, in action, it's like completely unrealistic, like how hard hitting and how perfect stuff hits. Like mm-hmm. I like how awkward and like rough a lot of the action was. Yeah, but again, they're trying to kill him. And like they're, they they're, are. Try, they're trying to get rid of Spider-Man, and like I said, like if you look at Spectacular Spider-Man, like yeah, like uh, spe- like let's take a example, Shocker. Spectacular Spider-Man, like he did use his his vibrations to try like not they're trying to try, kill him. Like, he's trying not to get killed. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, when Spider-Man tried to disarm them, he would use his webs, but he would also pull them in, and try to knock them out with a punch or two. Like it wasn't always just webbing them up; it was also trying to make sure they're down for the count, so they don't try to break free of the webs, which usually may not happen, but when it's when it's something someone like the Shocker, they can break free of their webs with their vibrations. Yeah. But like I feel like that it was more of his character to be more passive and not violent. Like I don't want to get in spo- like maybe if we can get into spoiler territory in a second so I can like talk about sort of what I mean. But like the stuff he did in the movie kind of shows that he's he's not out to hurt people. He's just sort of out to save people and like prove himself as a hero. So maybe his lack of punches was like them showing that he doesn't like go out of his way to hurt people. He's just defending himself. I have some cons that don't go into spoiler territory. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
Uh, for one, a lot of the, uh, like, the composition of frames at times just felt confusing. Mm -hmm. And, like, a lot of things seemed out of focus at times, so that may have been just the IMAX version. Nah, yeah, every time I, I think it's going to be like that, regardless how you see it, just because that's just how we, it was directed. Yeah. Maybe. And our thing was just, like, the pacing felt really confusing. I, would I say agree that with that. I wouldn't say the pacing that per se felt confusing, but it was a bit difficult to, like, you couldn't tell when you were in the first act or the second act or the third act. So in that aspect, yeah, the pacing was confusing, but I think every scene flowed at a natural pace. There was times yeah. where I'm like, oh, is this going to be, like, the final big scene? And then it, like, sort of wasn't, and I was kind of left, like, just confused at, like, what was going to happen next. Yeah. Um. So, so like, before we move into, oh, sorry, go, go on. No, no, so you go, you go. Well, I was going to say, before we move into spoilers, does anyone have any final comments? Uh, if you want to see this, I highly recommend this movie. I do think oh, it's one of 100. the best Spider-Man films. I I, again, I still think Spider-Man 2 is my favorite for a multitude of reasons I won't go in here. But this is still an amazing, like, don't sleep on this if you're a Spider-Man fan, if you're a comic fan, or if you just want to see a good movie, an entertaining it movie. Is, yeah. If you want to be entertained for two and a half hours, this is the I... movie. Literally never been more entertained in a movie theater than I have while watching this movie. I've never like laughed harder or like been like more surprised. I a hundred percent recommend this movie, despite the name. Like at first, I was super abhorrent to it just because it was called Spider Man Homecoming. And that was gonna be stupid, but no, it's it's really great, so I recommend it. Closing thoughts, Tom. Uh, I don't really have anything that isn't gonna go into spoiler territory. All right. So at this point, if you're still listening. We're getting to spoilers. Click off, Oof. or if, if, you, if you've already seen the movie, you want to hear our spoiler talk, go go right ahead. If you haven't seen the movie and you still listen to spoilers because you're the kind of person where spoilers make me see the movie more, then you're in luck. So first <laughs> things first, I just want to get this on my chest. This was a really underwhelming final confrontation, final battle, because it wasn't really a battle. and There wasn't even anyone in the plane. Like, the <laughs> plane was empty. <laughs> like yeah. And... I think that's just a biggest critique I've with the entire film. It yeah. felt like the stakes were minimum. And for Spider-Man, that kind of works because he's such he's a, he's a street-level villain. So the stakes can't be world-ending. And I don't want the stakes to be world-ending. I don't think the stakes should be world-ending in Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. However, I still think the stakes should be relevant to Peter's life. At, at, like, it totally was relevant to his life at the end with Homecoming, I feel. He said he was going to kill his entire family. Like, yeah. that's when it got personal. I guess what I mean is, like, for example, the elevator scene when, um, okay, and I gotta rant about that too right quick. Yeah, what the heck was that? Yeah, so they made a big stink out of Ned Leeds having a bomb, a, Ch a Chitauri bomb, an alien bomb in his uh -huh. backpack. And then, oh my God. <laughs> you think, so, okay, so he has to get to it before it explodes. And then it does explode, but it's really unclear how it's supposed to like, it didn't it, even explode it like shot out it was yeah, like, yeah. Did, did it like did it like i hated how they did like that movie trope where it's like you have 25 seconds and then 25 seconds turns into like 20 minutes <laughs> yeah no but because they keep coming back and forth and and, and sam raimi spider-man like a, if this was a sam raimi film they would have made that elevator scene serious like you would have known okay everyone came out fine but there still would have been some tension there. Here, it's played for jokes. There was, like, there was tension. But yeah, there was a lot of jokes. The, I, I feel like there was no tension because like, literally the entire time it was like, oh yeah, everything's fine. And then you have Peter's AI, I forgot her name, talking to him. Um, Karen. Yeah, he was like, um, it was like, what did she say? The tour guide lady said... Uh, like, Basically, she contradicted everything that the tour guide was saying to keep them calm. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. She's like everything's fine, and then Karen would be like, everything is not fine. Yeah. We we just like, like we, we have like top of the line support or whatever, and then the AI was like, support systems are failing. I laughed at that. Though. That was funny. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, was funny, laugh, but I felt like that scene should have been scene. way more serious. I think that's just the tone of this movie was like not very serious overall, and which that, I thought was like interesting. And that's kind of my beef with it. I felt okay. Like I felt like there were some points where it got serious. Yeah. It, it, oh, it for sure. Serious. But I feel like overall. The moment where I felt like it finally got serious was the beginning of third act when he, you know, uh, lost the suit. The second he goes to uh, Liz's house and he opens the door and you see the vulture, you see Adrian Toomes there. That had me shook. I literally clapped. I'm like, oh my gosh! Like I didn't see that coming. That was, that was wild. Um, I mean, yeah, I probably it's, it's like something you wouldn't have seen coming, and it does. 
I wouldn't say it was foreshadowed, but like the vulture guy kept saying he like his family's really important to him. Now, if we had some dialogue from Bliss saying like, "Oh, my dad like like really like values family," saying like maybe they could uh, it, I'm not I'm not gonna say it came out of nowhere, but still surprised. It, it was unexpected, but I still think maybe like some dialogue from Liz could have helped it like set it up a bit better, so it didn't feel super forced. And it doesn't come okay. across it doesn't come across as forced in the moment, but when you look back at it, you're like, here's, eh. here's the thing though: it's like when it happened at first, I was like, oh shit, this was all set up. When like oh. really, I feel like it should have been like, oh my god, everything makes sense now. Yeah, like it should have been a moment where like everything clicked. Yeah. yeah, I feel like it was less that and more of just, like, a twist that you didn't see coming. But it made for, like, an entertaining, like, scene. Yeah, I yeah. always think that the best yeah, plot twist... Yeah, the scene twist... after that was, like, golden. It was the best. No, yeah, but I think the best plot twist is the... are the twists that you can see coming. Or the best mm. plot twists are foreshadowed. And then when it actually happens, you're like, oh, wait, man, like, how did I not see that? Or, oh, man, I was right. Here, it, it wasn't really like that. It was just like, oh, or... It just or it's yeah. like a missing piece that puts everything together yeah. in a way yeah. that like actually makes sense. Yeah, that twist. Yeah, I agree with that. It was. Uh, I'm not the gonna say it was, was a bad. bad. Yeah, it, the execution wasn't bad, but the build up was definitely could have been improved. And like I said, all we needed is some dialogue from Liz just saying, "Oh, my dad really values family," and then people could have started maybe or like, something. Oh. Maybe not that, but like, "Oh, my dad works out of town and shit like that." Yeah, that would have that would have been perfect if they did that. But like, I don't know. Uh, but first they, of all, from a villain standpoint, I had I had a ton of sympathy for him. I was I almost like, like mad that's at a Peter. Good thing, no, yeah, this yeah, is definitely like, one of the dude, better Marvel villains for sure. And he was played like, by the great Michael Keaton, who was you know Batman. Birdman. Everything. Yeah, it was totally fitting <laughs> because he I wasn't laughed. just like, oh, he's the bad guy. It's like, <laughs> oh, well, he has like a reason for what he's doing. It's not yeah. necessarily like good what he's doing but it's like you understand the reasoning behind and that it. monologue he gave about like high society and like we fight their wars and wars and build the roads like i was like oh yeah that's actually keep doing what you're doing like i almost was like supporting <laughs> after that. keep doing what you're doing <laughs> like literally i'm like and then you know he's completely ruined liz's life and her yeah. mom like well, for I no good like reason here's the thing about that is i feel like that kind of like that showed the saying with great power comes great responsibility and that moment i thought of that it's like they didn't even have to say that in this movie yep. yeah that's good because it's okay. like he's trying to do the right thing and it's like he can't do the right thing all the time because he has so much power and so much responsibility yeah oh that's true i just feel like if we had at least one scene with donald glover with one of those shock guns just killing things i would have like it's a red bone <laughs> <laughs> just to red bone. <laughs> um, <laughs> that'd have been great. But yeah, no, but yeah, I just, I just I wish there was more tension. Like, I think that's my my biggest beef with the movie is that I felt like there was a lot of tension, though. No, I, like I said, I did not feel a smidge of tension, and I would have felt tension during the elevator scene if they just played it a I bit more tension. seriously. Yeah, I was stressed out the entire time, honestly. No, yeah, I, I was saying. <laughs> It was just Kevin Williams' experience. And, like, the fact, I mean, okay, I'm glad the villain didn't die, because that's, like, a Marvel and Spider-Man movie That was problem. cool, that was cool. But, in the beginning, when they, he was having, like, the guys, the robbers, just with Avengers, and then they blow up the convenience store across the street, that was really engulfed in flames. Like, the the cashier would have oh, yeah. been dead, and the cat should have been The ass- cashier just never, never comes back after that. They and, set up, like, they had this cute little relationship, and then he saves him, and it's like, oh, never gonna see that character again. No, also, okay. he has a cat. You no, know, yeah, okay, so, the reason why I thought it would have been interesting, I thought, like, when they exploded, I'm like, oh, shit, like, he's dead. I thought it would have been a wake-up call to Peter, like, moment. Not even the Uncle Ben movie. That would have been a wake-up call to Peter, like, okay, what I'm doing is irresponsible. And, like, they kind of have it when Ned and Peter are walking, and that's like, you could have died. But if someone else actually died, that would have put a lot on Peter. Like, the I boat feel like, scene. I feel like in Civil War, they kind of already, like, implied that. Like, implying that Uncle Ben is already gone, and that's part of the reason why Peter does it. Oh, no, I'm that's so exactly what that, so impl- that wasn't even applying it. That was just It was just their way of saying it. Because we already yeah. know his origin story. I'm so glad they didn't show it, and they didn't show him getting bit. It was funny though, because like they had a scene with him and his friend, and he's like, "Can I? Can the spider bite me?" And he's just like, "The spider's dead," and that's all you hear about it. It's <laughs> just like, that was funny. No, and something I really appreciate is the fact that they reveal that Ned, uh, like they reveal Peter's identity to Ned pretty early on. 
Yeah. Uh, Ned was a good character. Because in the trailers, like, I think even since, like, the first trailer, they gave it away. So every time I notice on screen at first, you're just like, all right, like, how long are going to keep this up? But, like, 20, 30 minutes in, they show it. Okay, so this is also pretty yeah, random. Like a this is, like, like, completely random. It felt like they did not know what they wanted the opening scene of this film to be. Because at first, you have... Uh, no, at, yeah. after the end of the first Avengers and it's Adrian Toomes talking um, and it's like the world changing boys time we change too and then we have basically another opening scene of Civil War from Pierce's perspective which both scenes were cool both scenes were nice but maybe they could have put one or the other and like have the Honestly, other scene happen later like I feel like they could have established Toomes like they still could have had the exact same thing they like just already have him like in the workshop doing his evil stuff and then he, like, monologues, like, you know, the world's changing, like, all this stuff happened. Like, you still could have got the opening sequence out of some uh, um, meaningful conversation. Yeah, we kind of just jumped right in with the whole video. Uh, yeah, yeah. That went on for, like, a little too long. Yeah, that, that should have been the opening scene. Like, imagine if it was, like, a film by Peter Parker after, like, the Sony logo. And then, like, um, he's like, I can keep the suit. And then they have the Marvel Studios logo. And then you meet Tombs and you learn his life yeah. story. That'd Honestly, be I feel like this movie would be a lot better with different editing. Yeah, I think it was an editing problem. I can see that. No, I, I agree. Like score, some stuff just felt like pacing felt off. The musical score was also kind of off. Like that's it, that's Marvel though. Yeah. Um, I was completely like blown away with the orchestrated version of Sixties theme at the Marvel Studios logo. Was, yeah. But like, I, I like when Tombs was in the plane and he, like he's going through all that tech. He gets like Iron Man's mask and then like he has the uh, the original Ultron head. Like. The music was like heroic and triumphant. I'm like, um, it should yeah, just be I like was... sinister music right now. I totally know that. I'm like, if I just jumped in right now, I'd be like, oh, the good guys are winning. But like, <laughs> also, do you expect me to believe there's not a single like, guard or alarm system in that entire plane? Like, it's way too easy. Like, he just sort of hung up the phone. He's like, I guess it's flying. Okay, we're good. Like, what? Oh my god. Okay. My biggest gripe though. My biggest gripe was the ending. I hated how it ended. Okay, I loved how it ended. I don't know why people. Okay, I, how it ended. I don't know. I w if if I were him, I wouldn't have thrown it away just to hang out with my stupid friend and Aunt May in New York City doing my nothing. My stupid I milf aunt, who everyone wants to fuck apparently. <laughs> and so, even the guy at the Thai restaurant, like, like everybody wants. Literally her. everyone, like okay, I get that she's attractive for her age, but she ain't that attractive. Let's yeah. be honest. Okay. Not, not the ending, way, Peter yeah. decides not to join the Avengers, Tony. He gives him, like, I guess the MCU's equivalent of the Iron Spider suit. He's like, there's, like, 50 reports out there, like, real reporters. And Peter's like, N I don't want to do He just says no. Why does he say no? The whole movie was building up to him proving that he can be an Avenger. That's not true. The movie was a coming-of-age story for Peter to prove to himself that he can be a hero. That's why Tony said... If, if you're nothing about the suit, then you shouldn't have it. It wasn't, if you're nothing about the Avengers, then you shouldn't hero. be one. He proved to himself that without the suit, he could still be a hero. And then that's when he takes the suit anyways, and is like, okay, let's do Yeah, it. why didn't he just give him that suit? Yeah, yeah, what the heck? That's what bugged me. It's like, he makes a brand new suit for him, and then he's just like, ah, oh, here's the old one that I took away earlier. Well, I feel like both his suit and the Iron Man suit, because you know his Iron Man's new suit in the movie, I think that was both set up for Infinity War. Like, we're going to see okay. those suits in Infinity War because I don't think that current suit Peter has is going to be durable in space for, for long, if, especially if they endure some pretty crazy battles. But, um, so wait, I, I'm kind of stupid, but when is Infinity War slated to release? Next May. Yeah, okay, cool. So that's probably, like, our next dose of Spider-Man and, like, every Avenger. Yeah. But, like... That, like or Spider-Man, what I don't even know what to call this. I want Zendaya to have more screen time, honestly. Yeah. I feel, oh like, yeah. I feel like all the side characters had a purpose besides maybe like Hannibal Burris and <laughs> Zendaya's character Michelle or MJ. Um, I, I mean, thought you didn't have any friends. Hey, she, hey, hey! Don't talk about my girlfriend like that. I don't talk about your girlfriend. I'm talking about her character, which I, I guess is just Bla well, Black it's Mary my Jane, girlfriend's character, so which isn't yeah. bad, but it. Hey, hey, he was hey, sassy. Hey. Like what? How long has she been sassy for? Uh, it's like, okay, so you have this perfect Peter Parker. And even Flash Thompson, yeah, yeah, like, okay, now he's like an Indian lip Gallagher. But he was still Flash <laughs> Thompson. Yeah. Everyone else, I don't know, they didn't feel like the characters, like, that they were kind of supposed to be, like Ned Leeds. Okay, I have not read a single Spider-Man account with Ned Leeds, so I have no idea what his character's supposed to be. But Mary Jane, Michelle did not feel like Mary Jane. I understand, 
okay, yeah, she's not Mary Jane, but they're calling her MJ. They know exactly that she's she's a black Mary Jane, and uh, I get new they're trying to make a new character, but like at the same time they're holding on to the old one, which is yeah. making sense. Just make a new girl. Yeah. I mean, they did. Yeah. No, but like, don't call her <laughs> MJ. Yeah. Then they made so, her leave. It ain't um, like they calling her marijuana. So they had, like Donald Glover, like okay. you know, his character came back into play, and I, I I looked up apparently his character's uh Prowler, which is a character in the comics. So I'm assuming in further sequels he'll be important. Maybe he'll even get his own solo film. Who knows with these with this cinematic universe? Phase four, phase five, uh, Donald Glover solo film. Everybody everybody's been clamoring for it, kind of. But as Miles Morales has been said, they're gonna get a Prowler film. Anyways, um. You know, he was introduced, and you're like, maybe he won't come back into play, and he comes back into play. Peter used him for information. You know, yeah, the shocker, that was cool. The shocker, I was so happy he, when he they comes into play again. They don't really have a final fight, even though, like, I, I, I cheered internally when Ned used the web shooters. That was a really great moment. That was that was awesome because I was really confused. I'm like, did Iron Man make a Spider Man robot? <laughs> Of his friend, and then that's the scene where he's like, um, the guy on the the guy in the chair. That was the greatest thing ever. Just watching him shift back and forth, and then when the girl came in <laughs> and asked what he was doing, uh, uh, over this movie was just girl. I could gush about it forever. Um, yeah, is, are there any final yeah. spoiler points? Because I can't really think of anything else. Like I said, I'm really I'm happy with the ending. I'm happy that he decided to remain a street level hero because that's who Spider Man is. He's a street yeah. level hero. He's not. And I guess we, for the we will see him in Infinity War. He'll play a big part in it. So yeah, it's not like he's not going to team up with the Avengers, but he's not going to be an actual Avenger. And I that makes me sad. I want him to be. Maybe like in time. Okay, eventually yeah. he'll be an Avenger. But honestly. I do think it's a bit ridiculous to have a 15 year old in the Avengers hanging out with the Avengers totally in the Avengers, eh, especially like, he's still in high school and like the high school scenes were so enjoyable. Like yeah, and made Spider Man one and Spider Man one. He was in high school and there were high school scenes, but they yeah, were so it was like... brief. Here it's an essential part of the story, like how how the Shocker and and his hench and his like what his partner. They go to the school to track down like the shot. Everything took place in the school. Like every legal activity they did took place in the school, which really confused me. It's like, don't you have a anywhere else to be? I'm actually but, uh, really happy that we finally have like a Marvel superhero who isn't just like, oh yeah, I'm a lovable jackass. No, exactly. True. Like, like this movie, I I feel like there are very few films in MCU that differ from one another. Like in terms of not only just tones, but the characters. And like just overall setting, and that's Guardians of the Galaxy, and now Spider Man. Like, yeah, you can kind of argue Ant Man, but you know he's gonna he's quickly getting his over to the Avengers. But like, with here, like we know Peter's gonna be doing like his own thing, and I really dig that. I love that so much. And we know like if Tony needs him, he can call him, and you know, he has him. Yeah, no, that's cool. So, I think overall they finally succeeded in like rebooting the Spider Man franchise, and I think it's it all has to do with him being back in the MCU. I mean, can you imagine if Sony just tried to make like another standalone Spider Man film? Let's not try to think about what they had <laughs> in like the Amazing Spider Man Four, the Sinister Six film, which the post credit scene does up Sinister Six, the very first post credit scene. I love the second post credit scene with Chris Evans is like, patience yeah, it was awesome. Let's like, say he said patience. I'm like, oh, we just got trolled hardcore, but it was it was a good troll. It was hilarious. They know their it audience. was worth it. And another great Stanley cameo. Just want to add that in there. That was funny. But yeah, if I, to, was like, oh, if I had to rank it, it'd be Spider Man, Spider Man. Oh, no, uh, films. Spider Man films. It'd be Spider Man 2, Spider Man Homecoming, Spider Man 1, The Amazing Spider Man, Spider Man 3, and then The Amazing Spider Man 2 at the very bottom because fuck that movie. Jumping the gun. This is my favorite Spider Man movie. I'm going to go see it again. Like Honestly, I think. It's probably the best movie as far as like development goes, if you ask me. Mm-hmm. Because I just think in, it's the funniest too. In the other ones, I feel like it was just like once they become Spider Man, it's like, oh, I'm a superhero, and it's like I'm amazing and all this. But they didn't do that with this one. It was like, I'm a superhero, and I'm also a kid and don't know what I'm doing and need to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the development was cool. Mm. It was just a great movie. Totally recommend it. Like I said, it has its flaws, and every, every movie has flaws. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and like like I said here, like I said, my main thing, action could have been a lot better. Um, like I said, I cut down on the jokes. Like I get it, Spider Man's quippy, but part of what part of what makes Spider Man funny to me, um, 
is the fact that he's always cracking jokes and he's always quipping, but people around him aren't. Oops. It's like he Spider Man when he's when the suit's on, he is a wise ass. But here yeah. it was like everyone was like throwing jokes back and forth. Like Ned, he was like, "What are you looking at?" Uh, p- poor. Okay, I actually really like that line because that was yeah. the greatest line of the movie. Because we were all thinking it lo- it, he probably looks like he's watching porn, but but he actually said it was. I wasn't porn. even thinking that. Oh I was just, yeah, I just laughed. I thought, and that was like the loudest the entire theater laughed too. I yeah. thought it was kind of like uh, that one meme where it's like when you're watching My Little Pony and then your parents walk in, so, so you switch to porn because it's easier to explain. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. No, but I think overall this is if you're if you're planning on seeing it, you should. Oh no, highly recommend this movie. A plus. Um... I don't like doing number ratings. I'm just saying it was a great movie. We thoroughly really, really enjoyed it, and we you, hope you will. You really too. gonna give it an A plus? Okay, no I'm A plus as in like I enjoyed it, not like A plus as in like actual ranking. My actual I ranking is my actual ranking is that it's a great movie with flaws, but it's still very very enjoyable. Give what, us an IGN grade? breakdown. What grade would the- you give it? Like a letter grade? I wouldn't give it a letter grade because I I hate I don't think those even make sense. For to be honest, because everyone I'd give it a B. I guess I would give it higher than a B. No, I'd give it a B. I love it's it. it's not a level. Like I, I can't forgive it. a lot of the uh, cinematic errors that it made. Mm. Story wise, I would give it like an A, but yeah. But well, it's like, their own. Well, I I think this is time where we turn to the audience. What do you guys think of this film? Leave your thoughts down below. Mm. What would you give it a letter grade? Uh, apparently, we're doing letter grades now. <laughs> why you gotta say it like that a plus from me a plus and if you enjoyed this video please store to like and if you're new here hit that subscribe button it really helps us out follow mm-hmm. us on social media and if you're feeling generous support us on patreon and if, you select, and if you let i'm not editing this out if you select if you select our diamond here we'll even shout your channel oh god okay that was out links to everything in the description ostrich box i'm retro nemo My name is Tom. Signing out. This video has been powered by Patreon. If you want to give us some more support, head to patreon.com slash roundtablevids, become a patron, and get some awesome perks. Thanks for watching another video on the Roundtable. If you want to get more involved with our community and watch videos from Let's Talk with Tom, Voxbox, and more, click the video right here. Or if you want to get some more of the animation goodness, watch some Crystal Clear or Mini Monday, click the video right here. And please, don't forget to subscribe.